What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where I would say like 98.2% of the things we do around here is talk about basketball and basketball-related topics. And before you get to clickety-clacking and commenting down below, you're absolutely right. The Daryl Morey news and the Houston Rockets news came out. I went to my closet and changed shirts to the one Houston Rockets shirt that I own. We have to coordinate these things. And you know, I was going to go above and beyond. You see my Chris Paul shirt here, a jersey. I was going to switch that out and put the one Chris Paul jersey that is with the Houston Rockets. But then I realized that nobody cares. Literally nobody cares. You know, this door right here is closed 99% of the time in these videos. And if I wouldn't have just pointed it out right here, none of y'all would have realized that it was open today. Nobody cares about the set pieces on this channel. So, I mean, you care about the outfits, but not the set piece. So I didn't change that. And that would have been too much effort anyway. But yes, I did. I did change my shirt to relate to today's topics. So be sure to leave a like on the video. And subscribe if you knew. I just pitched to you why you should subscribe. A, we talk about basketball. And B, I coordinate my outfits. That's it. That's all, that's all you really need to know. Subscribe. So this is how the timetable went for me today. I woke up this morning and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a Kenny For Real video where I talk about the ratings of sports. Because basketball, uh, since the return of the bubble, was down like 50%. The Stanley Cup was down like 60%. Uh, baseball is down. Football, everybody's down. Uh, and I was going to talk about why I think that might be the case, all the determinative factors, and open up a dialogue to y'all. I thought that was going to be a fire video. But right before I was going to record that video, some news broke. Shams put out his first piece about free agency, talking about this player opting in, this player opting out. Anthony Davis is staying, which is something that we all knew. A lot of people mentioned to me on Twitter, like, look, Anthony Davis is staying. We know that. I'm just, I was just, I thought y'all understood that the Anthony Davis Chicago Bulls thing was a, was a, it was a joke, y'all. Nobody leaves a franchise that struggles to build around them, go to a championship team, and then go back to another franchise that would struggle to build around you. He was going to stay. So that's not news. But uh, Shams put out that, talking about teams willing to spend money. All that. I was like, okay, we got to talk about that. It's topical. And then before I hit record on that video, that's when the Daryl Morey news came out. And I was like, okay, that goes at the top. All those other two videos can wait. And we have to talk about it, man. We have to talk about it. First of all, I, I, I put this on the table. As many of y'all may know, if you watch the main channel, I am a fan of Daryl Morey's work. Um, we have followed each other on Twitter. We've had a few DMs, conversations. So I am a fan of Daryl Morey, but I'm going to look at this objectively outside of that. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the things he did wrong and things like that. Everything I saw so far today, and that, that's the reason why I gave you the timetable, because I'm sure there will be more news to come out about all of this after this video is posted. It's just the nature of the business. Um, but from what I've just read, it was 100 percent on Daryl Morey. And if that is the true case, congratulations, Daryl Morey, because you because you get to do what you want now. I mean, if, if if GMing wasn't your plan anymore, you could go do what you want. I read that say he wants to spend more time with his kids. Everybody wants to spend more time with his kids. So he took the initiative. He did that. Congratulations, Daryl Morey. Um, but if, if Daryl, if you're watching this, I don't think it's I don't think it's a high possibility. But if you're watching this, I would love to talk. Not about this, not not necessarily about this and, and your next adventures, but like just talk about the time when you were the Houston Rockets, bro. It's a lot of things, a lot of things happen in those. I don't remember, 14 years? I don't really know. Hit me up. Hit me up if you're trying to have a conversation. So if you did not know, Daryl Morey's team, was, since he came with the Houston Rockets, they are the second highest win percentage in the NBA behind the Spurs. Like, I'm just giving you the, the resume of you did not know. And that's something I just found out after you got fired, just by a Bleach Report update or something. And then I saw something on Reddit two weeks ago that was like, since the James Harden trade, since Daryl Moore put off the James Harden trade, all 29 other teams in the NBA have missed the playoffs at least once. And the only team that hasn't missed the playoffs since the James Harden trade has been James Harden and the Houston Rockets. That is an insane, insane statistic. Uh, the one, one of the reasons why I, was, I am a big fan of Daryl Moore is that he's always trying to be innovative and pushing the envelope when it comes to things. He's hit on some. He's missed on others. The analytics thing, he was the driving force behind analytics and basketball. And every team uses analytics today. I mean, maybe not to the extent that the Houston Rockets where they completely got rid of the two-pointer, like the mid-range jump shot, but every team uses analytics at this point. Every player that I've talked to that we mentioned analytics, they, they have agreed that they have an analytics team or people that tell you things analytically. And that was mostly started by Daryl Morey, so he hit on that one. The small ball thing is the one that missed. I understand the idea behind it. And I'm glad he even attempted it, but we saw that it just didn't work out, especially when you have players like Anthony Davis, Jokic. These are these are great, great bigs. And P.J. Tucker, as great as P.J. Tucker is defensively, he cannot hold Anthony Davis in a seven-game series. It's just a fact. They may get game one, but that's a fact. 
So, uh, again, I admire people that are trying to push the envelope and, and try to change things that have been traditional for so, so long. So that's another reason why I, I'm a fan of that. He's hit, some, he's hit and missed on some trades. The James Harden trade is one of the best trades in the history of basketball. It is. You traded for a superstar player without really giving up anything of significance. Sure, you gave up some stuff, but how much of that stuff tra translated to wins? Exactly. Exactly. So you get a superstar player, and I just mentioned how they have not missed the playoffs since you made that trade. But you also have ones you look back on, you're like, ah, oh, I bet they wish they had that one back. The Russell Westbrook for Chris Paul trade, I, I, is, I just think that Chris Paul and James Harden work better together on court. On court than Russell Westbrook and, and James Harden did, and especially when you consider that you gave up picks as well. Um, but one thing that we, we talked about, I think that was even on yesterday's video or two days ago, we talked about the Houston Rockets continuously being contenders and how in an interview from a few years ago, Daryl Morey has said that if I do not help James Harden get a championship in, in his tenure in the NBA or my tenure as the general manager, then we failed him. And we failed him. And I am a firm believer, and I don't want to live in a world of ifs and hypotheticals and things like that, but if Chris Paul doesn't go down with an injury against the Warriors, I do believe that they beat that Warriors team. They go to the championship. But who knows what happens there because LeBron has a good, pretty good track record, record in the finals, four of them. Um, I don't know how that series goes, but a championship appearance is always better than not a championship appearance. So, cool. This is very interesting. Um, I've been seeing a lot of Rockets fans uh, call out the, the owner, Tillman, you know, for all the things he's done in the past and, and, and this one being on top of it. But if it is true, that is 100% Darryl Morey. I don't know if I can blame Tillman. I'm not saying Tillman has not been good. Don't don't get me wrong. He has not been good. But the reason why it could be Tillman and, and Tillman pushing Darryl Morey to that point is just yesterday, there was a report that came out that said the Houston Rockets were, were in the middle of interviews. They were in the middle of interviews because you do not remember. They, they don't have a coach either right now. So they were in the middle of interviews. And then the next day, Darryl Morey steps down. Which could be in a predicament where, like, Daryl Morey interviewed somebody that he absolutely loved. Because if I am a general manager and I am building a team and I see somebody that I think could be the the one for my team and my owner tells me, nah, I don't know if I want to be there anymore. So, of course, we don't know anything as of right now as I'm recording this video, but I'm sure they will come to the light one day. I'm sure they will come to the light one day. Now, the real question is what's next for the Houston Rockets, right? Because with their more, you know the statement that I said where he was like, if we do not get James Harden a championship, I have failed him. He had did everything in his power. He was doing a KLT for a Q video. You feel me? He was trading all of his assets. And that right now, if you look at that roster, they don't have any young assets. Chris Clemens is a short king, and I like him, but he's the youngest player on the team, but he does, he's, not, he's not an asset. They don't have any picks, really, like none. You know, they, they did all of that. Every trade that they did was trying to get James Harden a championship. So right now the Houston Rockets is living in a world with no young assets. They live in a world with no future draft, uh, draft stock. And they're living in a world with two max players, and both of them are getting up there in age. Russell Westbrook and James Harden are both still very, very good NBA players. But they're also getting up there in age. And what we saw this season is that they don't work very well. The reason why they more he had to trade Clay Capella is to open up the game for Russell Westbrook. And guess what? After he did that, Russell Westbrook had a significant jump in his pro productivity once he didn't have a person in the paint. You know? So Darryl Moore tried to do his things, but I don't... What is next for the Houston Rockets? Right? What does this new general manager who... I think they just promoted somebody. I don't think there's hiring anybody. Thank you to everybody that sent my resume in for them because I appreciate you even though I'm not looking for the job, especially not the job of a former friend. That's just kind of weird. Not a former friend, but a job from a friend. You know, it's just a little bit weird. So what's next for Houston Rockets? Those trades. You remember the trades that we talked about here on this channel? <laughs> the Ben Simmons for James Harden trade? I don't know. I don't know. I guess it depends on what Tillman believes or then his new front office believes the ceiling of this current team is, because again, they are capped out, no draft stock capital, no young assets to get and flip. There's either two things, either we ride and die with it right now, what we do, or you hit the reset button. You hit the reset button. And the only way you hit the reset button is you trade James Harden because he is the guy on your team, of course, with the most value. We're talking about a player that has been in MVP conversations for the half, half a decade now and has not got worse. You know, so I think that this offseason, we talked about it in yesterday's video. Look at that. I'm just talking about everything in yesterday's video, how this offseason could be so, so significant. I didn't see this coming, but this offseason could be really, really significant. They may have this board meeting where they're like, man, we tried it with Maury Ball. We tried it with, with all the things that he liked. We didn't get to that promised land. 
and the only way, the only way we do that is if we hit a reset because there is a there is a ceiling on the team that they have now. This team is most likely not winning a championship. It's not. If you look at the top contenders out west, what are they like four? Maybe five? So there's a ceiling on this current structure of the team, and the only way to get out of that is to trade your best player. Because, I mean, I, I saw another rumor where the Knicks were interested in Russell Westbrook, but even like Russell Westbrook's probably not giving you anything of significance if you trade him away, like anything that's going to help you right now. So you're going to have to trade him away probably or maybe just keep his contract because his contract is huge and he, he's having trouble staying completely healthy this season in, in the past couple. That – James Harden is like, of course, the the golden piece of free agency right now, the golden piece of trades, depending on how things go, depending on how things go. But at the end of the day, I, I think as NBA fans, the other 29 teams, I don't know, Houston fans, of course, um, how do you feel? But the other 29 teams are like, yeah, more chaos, more chaos in the NBA, more chaos in the NBA. And, of course, I mean, I'm going to wrap this up very soon. I, I can't go this whole video and talking about Daryl Morey and talking about the Houston Rockets without talking about his comments towards uh, at the beginning of the season. If you did not know, he made a tweet basically um, uh, on the situation of Hong Kong and China. I'm not an expert on what, what's going on over, over there in these different countries, but obviously the Chinese government did not, did not like that so much so that they banned the viewing of the NBA in China. And China is a pretty big market for the NBA. And it all started from a Daryl Morey tweet. Um, and, and they just lifted that ban game six in the playoffs, game five in the playoffs. They had just lifted that ban, that ban. And um, obviously the NBA missed out on viewers. They missed out on some money and things like that. And I'm sure that may have had some type of play if it was, again, if it wasn't true that it's 100% Daryl Morey's calling. I'm happy. I don't know. I don't know what Daryl Morey's next thing is. In the article, it said that he wanted to spend t- more time with his children, which is a great thing. But he doesn't take him as a type that'll just chill. I bet I bet the Sacramento Kings are kicking themselves. Because, again, Darren Moore has consistently been one of the top five general managers in the league as far as building a team that can make the playoffs and make some noise in the playoffs. And the Kings already hired their guys. If they knew this Darren Moore stuff was coming, they would have just left that vacancy open and, and called Darren Moore three minutes after a release. Hello, Darryl. We missed the playoffs for over a decade. Please save us. And Daryl Moore is the type of guy to be able to do that like that. To make the playoffs like that. Uh, so I don't know what his next adventure is. I don't know. But Daryl, if you're watching this, I would love to talk about it. I would love to talk about it. Hit me up, bro. Hit me up. All right. I appreciate everybody. Um, let me know what you think about, of course, all the topics and the other things I talked about, the, the top of the show, about the ratings and, and all the free agency stuff. Those will be in future videos, maybe tomorrow or the day after. Trust. Love y'all. Peace.